Welcome to Fight Heads MMA. It's me, Miss Nikki. I'm back. Y'all haven't heard from me since last month when I was doing Bare Knuckle 6. And, um, yes, exciting card. Exciting card. So I'm going to give y'all just a little quick overview of the things that I've seen going down over the last few weeks while I just took some downtime. Um, you know, I ended up all the way up here in Mason City, Iowa, and not until after I got here did I really, really find out and know why that I was here. Um, it, it was just bigger than me, so just know that. Um, and it was more important than anything in the world to me, so with that being said, I had to come here, so I had to take care of business. Um, God had to make a way for me <laughs> to for my eyes to be open so huh, that's where we're at but let's go on back to combat sports there's been a lot going on in combat sports on an amateur level and on the professional level um oh a let me say happy birthday to my lady mama barnett mama kim barnett over there 757 boxing club and fitness that's my home gym in virginia yes always will be um she had a birthday on friday my daughter's birthday is in a couple of days so happy birthday to all my july babies um i hope everyone has a great birthday for this one. isn't that weird reggie's birthday was on the fourth and his mom's was on the 20th so <laughs> i just imagine the relationship between them two is just so outstanding and comical at times but um you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, so he's a good young man, and that's because he comes from a good set of people. So, again, congratulations, <laughs> Mama Barnett, on making it one more year through all the craziness, and uh, happy birthday, young lady. We love you, and happy birthday. Um, So, back to Bear Knuckle Fighting Championship 6. The line is drawn. A line was drawn, you guys, for a lot of people that night. I would, first off, I'm going to say that I think I had, what, maybe four interviews that morning before the fight with some of the fighters. I know I talked to Travis, I talked to Julian, I talked to Drew, and I talked to, um, my God, wait a minute, his name is right here on this paper. I will tell you. Oh, Tom Show. So, Julian and Tom fought that night on the card, um... And Julian won by decision. That was another one of those um, knockdown drag out fights. Them two really went in there and slugged it out. Um, I'm pretty sure it, it was, you know, something for the judges to make a decision on since nobody got, you know, nobody got a stoppage during that fight. So, um, congratulations, Julian Lane. I think he was coming off the last time we seen him before. The bare knuckle six he had been on bare knuckle four i believe yes down there in cancun and i'm pretty sure yeah i think he took a loss that night so he was coming off of a loss and um was looking for a little redemption and he got it that night with him and tom you know in a fight with tom show but um i'm gonna just go from the bottom up and um read what the outcomes of those fight was i most of y'all watched it some of y'all watched it and then some people didn't. Um, Jared Hayes versus Chris Bofel. Um Chris got the win, TKO win in the third round. Um, Abdel Velasquez versus Travis Thompson. Now, that fight right there was quite interesting to me because um, I thought in my mind, and I'm pretty sure that Travis looked, a little bit better in Cancun than he did in this fight with Abdel. So with that being said, both gentlemen were a part of uh, that eight-man lightweight tournament. And uh, Travis did not get past Reggie and Abdel did not get past Johnny. So that's how Johnny and Reggie ended up being the final two at the top of the tournament and 
that night Johnny came out to be the better man. He got the win. He got those belts. He got that um, bare knuckle lightweight belt, and he got the um, post gazette, um, pol the police gazette belt that night. So congratulations to Johnny. Um, it's been no fanfare about that. That's really surprising to me. It's been no fanfare about him winning those two belts, and um, I'm not sure why. I, you know, um, I don't know. I can't tell y'all. Um, all I could tell you is that if my guy had been victorious that night, we would have turned out. We'd still be turning up. <laughs> the party would still be going on. Um, for me, it was just sad to see my friend and boxer Reggie not get get the belts you know that was a real hard and tough fight as all of them are but you know at the end those two were the best in in that weight class and um they slugged it out good better and different and johnny got two knockdowns and i say two even though i think maybe officially they gave him three but i say two because in the consensus from the crowd that had been watching also and had a another view from where I was sitting beside the ring because I couldn't see every single punch that landed. I couldn't see every single thing that happened because of the way that square circle is built. You know, they got some big posts there, so sometimes it kind of blocks movements when the fighters are in there. So I'll say Johnny got two knockdowns, and I think Reggie spent a, lot of, a good portion of the fight trying to get back from those knockdowns, which y'all never really do unless y'all get a knockout or unless y'all get a finish in your MMA fight. So, you know, I, it is what it is. Um, both men came in there and gave it all they had that night. So I'm very proud of both of them. Again, congratulations to uh, Johnny Bedford. And y'all just need to be looking for um, Reggie Ease Barnett to be making his way back through because he coming back for that belt. Trust and know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's very meaningful for him. Um, it's, it's part of what he wants to make part of his legacy. So be looking for him to come back through there for that belt and to acquire it. Now, whether Johnny holds on to that belt until then remains to be seen. We don't know. Um, anything can happen. Y'all know that when y'all walk inside the squared ring, the regular ring, and the octagon. In any cage, y'all know that anything can change in any moment for y'all in a fight. So, um, be looking for that to come back. But what I do know, what I have been told, what has come down the pike is that in November, we get to see probably two of the favorites that was in that lightweight tournament, which was Abdel and Reggie. We get to see them two bang it out. Yeah, so maybe the winner of that fight will see Johnny for the belt if Johnny is still holding on to the belt at that time. You just never know how Bare Knuckle is going to plan this out and with how far they're going to stretch this out. When they're going to have Johnny come back and defend that belt, I don't know. But, um, yes, be looking for that. So that picture that I have of me, Reggie, and Abdel, that's still going to come to fruition. So I'm excited about that for both men because they both get to come back. And, um, but Abdel did get that win on this last bare knuckle championship against Travis Thompson, who previously fought Reggie and previously Abdel had fought Johnny. So with that being said, I think that's a likely make matchup. As a matter of fact, after um, Reggie and Johnny's fight back there in the um, locker room, we ran into Abdel and his team, always awesome, such an awesome team. They are so nice, so wonderful. And Abdel is such a wonderful young man. Yes, 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 yes. He is my, he's fight his MMA, most improved fighter at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. He showed me a different fighter in this on this last card when he fought Travis. He showed me patience. He showed me that he had been working on some things. He showed me that he had been working on his distance. He has showed me that he had been working on his footwork. He is my most improved fighter of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. So there you have it. Anybody don't like it? Too bad for y'all, cause this is me. Yeah. Yes, I was very proud of um his look that he showed on this last card for Abdel, um, the Nightmare Velasquez. Yes, very very proud of him. Um, 
I can't even tell y'all. I didn't even see that coming like that. And what is this weird ducking thing you do with your head, Travis? What is that? I don't understand that. That was something that I didn't see as much of when you was fighting on number four card, but I seen it again reappear when you fought Abdel this last card. You know that's a big part of the reason why you did not win that fight because you didn't keep your head up. And that gave him a chance to just time you coming in. Boop, boop, boop. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. You got to break that habit, Travis, of ducking your head. You, it's such a weird duck and it's not, and it doesn't lead into anything. I could see if it was going to lead into something, but you have to sometimes be looking at what you're swinging at, Travis. <laughs> Maybe that's just your style of fighting, baby. I don't know. No judgment. <laughs> okay, so David um, Mundell at 185 and Drew Lipton. Now, Drew said that he was ready. We we did an interview that morning before the fight, and I felt like, he, you know, he was in a good place. That Everybody was, you know, in a good mind frame that morning when I came across them. So I didn't have no doubts that nobody, anybody walking into this competition was not ready or that they were fair in anything. Everybody had great energy that day. So, you know, it was very... Shocking to see Mr. Lipton get stopped. But David, his will was just a little bit more. And, and he came out swinging for the hills. And he, and he caught him. Got the KO um, knockout win over um, Drew Lipton. Um, then you had Jim Allers versus Elvin Brito. Um, Jim got the win in the first round. KO over Elvin. Um, yeah. It happens sometimes, you know. You guys, you guys put it all in. Okay, so Joe, Joe Riggs versus um, Walber Barreros. I believe during I believe that I was having conversation with um, a supporter of Mr. Barreros um, going against Joe Riggs. That about ended up being a draw. That's how much they got in there and slugged it out that the judges couldn't even say who definitively won, who definitively lost. So that was a, a draw. So be looking for that one to maybe come back. They may run that back between those two. They may run that back. So be looking for that. Um, and that was at 180 pounds those two met. Walbur came in at 183.4 and Joe came in at 181.6 um the heavyweights Jamie Campbell versus Joey Beltron Joey went in there and got himself another K he got himself a KO win hey you go Joey yes 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 um Julian Lane versus Tom Shove win by decision on Julian Lane them two fought at 170 and they both came in on weight, 169.8 for um, Julian and 168.8 for um, Tom. That's great. That's great news. Um, then you had Reggie and um, Johnny Bedford. Reggie weighed in at 133.2 and, Reg and Johnny weighed in at 134.6. Um, and Johnny got the, the unanimous decision win. That was because of the knockdowns because them two slugged it out. Outside of them knockdowns, that would have been... Yeah. Chris Lieben, he and uh, Dakota Cochran met at, um, for the co main event, they met at 190, I believe. It looked like Chris Lieben came in at 193 and Dakota came in at 190. Maybe they met at 195. And that's why it's like that. Who knows that? But, um, Dakota got the win by decision in the fifth round. Do I have a five? Yeah, he got the win by decision. I believe that Chris ended up going to the hospital after this fight. I hadn't heard anything about him since this fight. So I'm going to have to do a little digging and see how Mr. Lieben is, is, you know, recovering from this. And then you got that main event. Mr. Polly Malinaji versus Artem Lobal. They got it in. I'm going to just be honest with you guys. I'm just going to truly, truly be honest. I didn't really get to see much of the fight because, you know, Reggie had just fought. So I was back with, with our team and um, collecting ourselves and 
that thing. So I didn't get to see much of the fight, but Reggie was off somewhere watching the fight with the <laughs> with the team doctor and then to had to watch it. So they watched it. But um yes, I'm gonna be honest with you, everybody that I spoke to in that place after that bout, after that fight Definitely relayed to me that they felt that Mr. Malinaji won that fight. Even MMA people said they felt like Mr. Malinaji won the fight. So where that decision came from with the judges that Artem won, I don't know. But I guess congratulations is to be had to Artem and his camp because they got the double you. We all know, it's just a fact of combat sports, we all know that at times people do get cheated out of their wins, period. It doesn't matter whether it's boxing, MMA, kickboxing. It, that's just a part of the game, you guys. So, you know, it would have been nice to even have Mr. Malinaji back, but after this experience, he's not coming back. He don't want to put himself through that and be, you know what I'm saying, get treated like that again. So with that being said, I believe he's out. We won't probably hear from him fighting bare knuckle again. Um, he did injure his hands. Both men came out of that fight with some some cuts and some bruises and you know, but Mr. Malinaji did mess up his hand. Um, I believe he probably um broke it. I, I'm pretty sure that's what he said. He broke it. Um it's sad that experiences like that keep y'all from being able to move forward or feel comfortable with doing something again. Um, I hate to see that. Um, and it's not fair to any of y'all, whether you go into the fight, the good guy or the bad guy, it's not fair to anybody to be cheated out of the, out of something that they have earned. So I don't know what to tell you, Polly. I don't know what to tell you, bro, but you got your check. And you bounced up out of that piece. And yes, Miss Nikki did. And my only question I had for him after that fight was what kind of, was he ready for the shit storm that was coming for him the next day and within that next week and probably the next couple of weeks after that fight with Artem, especially with Artem getting the win. <laughs> And it made him chuckle. I'm glad I gave him a little laugh after the fight, you know, because <laughs> we all need to laugh sometimes. So I did enjoy that. And he did respond to me, and I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and I think he told Miss Nikki just a little bit of a lie. That's why I asked that question, because sometimes <laughs> y'all will say some shit just to say it. And that's why I asked him the question, are you ready for that shit store? And what did he say? I don't check my by uh, social media next Friday before the next Friday I think one of one of the other I think it was Fight Hub caught up with him and he I did post this video too he put <laughs> he went on another rant talking about us MMA fans and talking about <laughs> what went down with um, bare knuckle and everything I thought it was just so comical I still like him I'm still <laughs> I was rooting for him, too. I was riding with him, even though I'm an MMA girl. I was riding with him because I felt like his boxing technique would win over Arnold's wild style of MMA, you know, striking. So, with that being said, I'm sorry, Polly, that you didn't get treated as fair as you should have been. I can't, I don't know what to tell you, bro, but um, enjoy spending your money. That's what I can say, enjoy spending that money. Yes, yes, yes. And also, during that time, we had um, EWC20 came about since the last time you guys have seen me. And too funny. Too funny. Um, oh, ooh, before I forget, let me congratulate all my boxers from 757 Boxing Club that went down to the Christy Martin Show this past weekend. Yes, Mama Barnett was in... In North Carolina with the team um, celebrating her birthday and watching all the great boxers from 757 Boxing go down and put in that work. They did win. This is what it says on a post on Instagram. What an awesome weekend. The boxers slash fighters worked so hard and their dedication paid off. True. I am proud to announce that 757 Boxing walked away with seven new belts 
They also won the Best Team Award and received the WC Belt and the Team Trophy. My home gym getting it in. I'm so proud of y'all. I am so proud of y'all. Congratulations to everybody. And especially my record Waddy. He got himself a belt this week. And yes, baby. I see you, Christopher. Let's get it. I really want to send a heartfelt thank you to our coaching staff, Reggie Barnett Sr., Reggie Barnett Jr., Carlos Nogue, G. Hart, Brian Nunn, and Lego Gordon. I also want to say thank you to the best parents any team could ask for. Congratulations to all. This is from 757 Boxing. I am so proud of you guys. And that's why I always tag it. Hashtag building champions one round at a time. We kind of went back and forth within the gym of what I what the hashtag was going to be. Everybody always has their own ideas. But in the end, I decided when I hashtag stuff for the gym, it would be for um, it would be building champions one round at a time because that's what is truly happening. So with that being said, they took that energy that Reggie brought back because he, he did not just go nowhere and I'm saying he had his moments about not coming home with his with the belts but at the end of the day he came back he was that positive guy that he left and he came back and rejuvenated his gym and his fight his boxers in the gym and they all took that energy and went down there to the Christy Martin show this past weekend and showed they asses and got that team trophy and got seven belts and came back mobbing through the streets, mobbing through the streets, mobbing through the streets. That's what they do. They mob. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I'm so proud of 757 Boxing Club. That is my home gym. That's Miss Nikki Fight Here's MMA Home Gym. This logo that you see, this logo that I wear every time y'all see me, that was built by Reggie Barnett Sr. for Miss Nikki. Thank you, Sr. Thank you, Papa. Appreciate it. Yes, so it's it's been a lot going on with y'all. Back to EWC20. Um, Melanie did send me, she did send me um, the results from from uh, She sent me um, the results from the from the Amy side of the card. So I'm gonna read y'all what she sent me because I want y'all to have the results. And this is the there there was a couple of surprising things that happened for me on this card that just kind of made me take a step back. First of all, Ryan Parker was supposed to fight on this card. And apparently, he didn't see... Ryan lives five fucking hours from where this event is being held. Where it's usually held, which is um, in Roanoke. He lives five hours away. So, for you guys that live these distances and come to these cards and fight, I don't think that y'all should be held to the same as the local fighters and as far as selling tickets. Five hours away is a long way to go for a lot of people. And a lot of people that support you guys as fighters. That's a long way to go. One thing for you guys to travel, you guys are the fighter. But for your fans and your fan base to follow, for, sometimes that's that's a great deal for, for people to get together and do that. Um, with that being said, they dropped his belt because he didn't sell enough tickets. And that just was stupid to me because at the end of the day, he's still a draw. His opponent is still a draw. So nobody made anything off of that that night. And um, it just didn't make sense. He went through a training camp and was ready to go fight and get him some redemption, you know, up there on at the EWC car. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How do we fix that? That's my question. How do we fix that? Okay, so... Glenn Lovell versus Cody, Cody Shelton. Um, Shelton won via TKO. Will McKinney versus Jake Ward. Winner was War via TKO. Um, Nicholas Fisher versus Joshua Rush. Winner was Miss uh, Nicholas Fisher via TKO. There was a lot of TKOs on that on the Emmy side of this card. Juan Stimson versus Andre Williams. Um, the winner was Mr. Stimson via TKO. Um, Eric Filler versus William Wilson. 
winner, Mr. Filler, via guillotine choke. Oh, wow. Damn. Damn, Will. Um, Tyshawn Bumpus versus Kane Tomlinson, winner, Tomlinson via um, rear naked choke. Dante Bazon versus Dallas Man Powell. Dallas won his fight by unanimous decision. You go, Dallas. Um, a title fight, Kim A versus Tyro Hill. Um, winner was Mr. Hill via TKO stoppage um, of the fourth round. So that was a that was a drag knockdown drag out fight, and Mr. Mr. Hill just took over in that fourth round. Another title fight was Timothy Daly versus Zion. Tomlinson, winner, Mr. Daly via TKO stoppage. 251 of the second round. Now, that one shocks me. Zion, that that was that's his second loss this year. That surprises me that that ended that way by TKO. Anything's liable to happen. Kickboxing, they had Justin Saddlewhite versus Adrian um, Williams. Mr. We Mr. Saddlewhite was the winner. TKO uh, opponent did not come out of the corner in the third round. Damn. Cal Thompson versus Jeff Carrico. I know both of those young men. Winner, Mr. Thompson via TKO. Um, hmm. Jeff is a pretty small guy. And Cal is... is mm, okay. Title, Mr. Jordan Wilson versus Jasper Scott. Mr. Wilson retained his um, title. Via TKO. Um, and them two went the, almost the distance too because that was stopped in the fifth round. Um, Peachy Pritchett versus Tia Jablonski. Um, winner, Miss Pritchett versus Unanimous Decision. Oh, so that was um, that was that was a knockdown drag out fight too. Thank you guys for all that you put in. Um, congratulations to all the winners on EWC 20. Um, I'm sorry for those who did not get the fight. I'm sorry for those who <laughs> had terrible, terrible um, fights. Um, Devon Shuey was supposed to be on that card. I think him and Will Wilson was supposed to fight. So I don't know what went down with that. But somebody's going to have to give me the info on what went down with that. Um, I would also like to say, you know what? I think I'm just going to do a whole new video for that. But, um... Yeah, I also like to thank my supporters of my um, GoFundMe page. It was four people: Sheena Starr, TJ VA Law, TC Combs, and it was another person, but I couldn't get back into the system to get that name. So thank you to all four of you. And that money, that ninety dollars, really did end up helping Miss Nikki. So thank you very much. I appreciate y'all. Um, Malik Green, as far as this EWC 20 card goes, um, he was supposed to fight and did not make weight, which is surprising for me because this young man usually makes his weight. So he didn't make weight, but then he wanted to negotiate and meet the guy at, an, at another weight. <laughs> but this guy, I think, held the title. He might have held the title, so you can't... <laughs> I don't know, just some unusual demands came from Malik for this last EWC card. I don't know what was going on with that. I haven't spoke to him either. But um, I don't think that fight went down. Um, I do want to make an, say something to my ex-combat wrestling trap fighters. First of all, weeks after fights, they are still punch drunk. So, um, yeah, that could have been... And, and, you know... Circumstances could have been on the other foot. It, it could have been him doing that to his opponent. But it just ended up that it was he ended up with the short end of the stick this time. So, Mr. Cottle, hold your head up, young man. That's probably not the worst thing that's ever happened. I'm saying we still got a dude that came, made his walk out, got in the ring, was standing in his corner, and just decided that he was not going to fight. I think that still trumps any... Any any knockout I've seen, any mishap that I've seen happen in the fight game in the last year, that young man that, and I can't even think of his name right now, but y'all remember him. And I think I would have done the same damn thing too. I'm saying if you've seen his opponent that he was about to fight, that dude looked like he was about to kill him. I think I would have left too. It was over. It was over. 
that kid was like, I'm not fighting him. I'm not about to lose my life. Then we had another boxer that ended up in the hospital this weekend. He was punch drunk also. He ended up going back, going to the hospital after his bout. Okay, Maxim Dashev, Dadashev. He ended up in the hospital with brain swelling after his loss. Oh my goodness. Y'all risk everything. Y'all risk everything. Y'all risk everything. And also, congratulations to Manny Pacquiao, who um, beat Keith Thurman in a split decision this weekend. Um, let me tell y'all something. Every time I see that guy, Mr. Roach, pop up with one of the fighters, I already know. That man has a boxing mind almost like on any other. He sees stuff that a lot of coaches do not see. And he has a way of transferring that to his boxers. He has a way of making them understand it where they are able to capitalize off of it. Freddie Roach. Yep. Tyson Fury. Who else was he? There was another fight. But um, he was with another cat. He got a big win. Um, and then you got Manny Pacquiao. So with that being said, some of y'all might need to might need to bring him into y'all's camp sometimes when y'all getting ready for these big fights. I believe that Keith had a problem with his range. I believe that um, you just can't never prepare for somebody like Manny, especially with the footwork that Manny Pacquiao has. Um, Keith is a fighter that likes to sit on his punches. He's used to being able to sit on his punches, and I think he just couldn't find his range. It was hard for him to kind of keep that pace, which he said it was, you know, that Manny was putting out in the movement. He showed him a bunch of different looks that he knew was coming, but he just was not able to respond to, so... <laughs> You know, and I feel, you know, I feel for this young man because he not only thought he was going to go in there and retire Manny Pacquiao, but he went in there and lost to Manny Pacquiao, somebody 10 years older than him. That was about the old line and the new line. That was about the experience. We can't even imagine how many uh, title fights has Manny Pacquiao seen. He's been in some knockdown drag out fights throughout his career. He's been in many title fights. And we just cannot expect for a fighter who is undefeated to continue being undefeated because there's always at least one other person out there who is just elevated one scotch higher than, than that person. And it's just a matter of if those two ever meet. So... He said it. He had it oh and it had to go. It happens to the best of y'all. And I can't take nothing from that young man because he still came in there and, and put up a great fight. That was a great fight. I got, you know, I watched it. It was a great fight. That was really great. You just didn't know what was going to happen from round to round. Um, Manny got the knockdown in the first. That meant a lot. That's what I'm saying. Those knockdowns mean a lot. Whether y'all run into them, whether they come clean, whether if your opponent gets a knockdown, that means a lot. And that sways the judges to be on the side of the person who caused the knockdown. So with that being said, I could see him maybe having a, a moment of panic like, damn, I just got knocked out. Yeah. And trying to get that back. And he said he chased it for a little while until he settled in and, and figured out, you know, I just got to fight. I can't be trying to get that knock back, that knockdown back. I got to fight. So he fought. He stayed in there and fought like a man. So congratulations to Manny Pacquiao. Um, Mr. Thurman, keep your head up, young man. It's all good, baby. Um, we look forward to seeing you come back, you know. Um, 
and you and you got to use the the positive energy as well as the negative energy when you go back into the gym young man and elevate just a little bit more you know what you know where you feel like you fell short your team knows and correct it that's all you can do you know what i mean that's all you can do it, it it's been a lot it's been a lot going on i'm trying to go through my page right now through my Facebook page to see if there's something I might be forget. Oh, the inductee ceremony for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship was um, last weekend. Um, great event. I didn't get to make it. I did not get to make it. I'm so sorry. I'm a look, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this trip up here to Iowa is. It's really not about me, you guys. It really isn't. So I got to do what I got to do. I got to take care of my own first. So that's what I'm doing right now. Taking care of my own first. Um, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, the, the bare knuckle ceremony um, went down. And um, Arnold got inducted. Hey, Katie. I'm looking at um, the new Miss Katie Shook. Her and Nate got married this weekend. Oh, her dress is so beautiful. And Nate is looking so handsome in his gray suit. They got married outside too, y'all. Oh, so sweet. I was invited to the wedding and I could not make I could not make it. I got to take care of my own first y'all. So, I'm sorry I didn't get to make it to any of all the beautiful weddings that I've been invited to this summer. Oh, you guys. I'm so proud of everybody. I'm so happy for everybody and I wish everybody the best in their new marriages with their new babies, new relationships, or anything that's good and positive happening for you guys. I really, really wish y'all the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this young lady, I have met her before. Um, I met her at the first Cowboy Fight Series. That's where I believe I met her the first time. And she's so quiet. She was quiet in that moment. And um, she just watched me and Nate, you know, gig it up. Me and him was talking about this, that, and all the other in the sports combat world. Um, I think we was probably talking about the upcoming bare knuckle. We was talking about what was going on there at the Cowboy Fight Series. And y'all know that Nate himself owns his own little brand. It's called Split Lip. And he is usually at um, the EWC shows selling his t-shirts. And he sells um, sports bras and little thongs. All that stuff for us, y'all. Yes, I got I got my sports bra. I got my little thongs and all that. Yes, I think he look nice in that. <laughs> y'all won't never see it, but <laughs> I just let y'all know I look all right in it. <laughs> Even my little fat piece. So, with that being said, um awesome wedding i'm very proud and happy for everybody that has um has something awesome and great and positive happen in her life be looking because i'm gonna reach out to reggie this week i'm gonna talk to him i haven't even talked to my dude since i've been home i i got a new job you guys and it requires a lot of my brain power so um, with that being said um I'm looking at Scott Burt. Beck sent her tooth to, to, to the Hall of Fame, uh, the one that she lost in Cancun. Her also, opponent knocked her tooth out in Cancun, so she she sent it to the Hall of Fame. So it's gonna be on display, you guys. How cool is that? And Beck didn't make it, but she got inducted. Um. Jeff Houston got inducted, um, Arnold Adams got inducted, um, Burt Scott got inducted, um, man, congratulations to everybody that got inducted, but the one person that did not get inducted, hmm, is the new 135 champion, hmm, what I tell y'all, want no fanfare about that, 
about him winning them belts. I wonder why. He didn't even come to the induction. Maybe because he knew he wasn't going to get inducted. Maybe he needs... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to find out. Miss Nick going to be... I'm going to be looking for that. I'm going to be looking about that. I'm going to be listening for that. So, yeah. Um, Scott Burt made a special video for Beck Rollins since she couldn't make it since she's in Australia. Um... I just shared it just now. I didn't put no title on it or anything. I just shared it to my page. Um, trying to look back and Victor. Minnesota veteran Pam Bam Sorsen, 7-3 and striking Viking Caitlin Young. <laughs> when is this going to happen? Oh, this is going to be August 9th. At Memorial Hall in Kansas City, Kansas. That's down there near my, my guy, um, Carton Combat Sports. I wonder if he's going to have his hand in this at all. Huh. So this is going to be an Invicta Fight card. The world's largest all-women's mixed martial arts organization returns to action this August 9th at Memorial Hall in Kansas City, Kansas. That's several hours away from me, but that would be awesome to, um, that would be awesome to, um, yeah, Nate and Katie got married in South Carolina. I'm way up here in Mason City, Iowa. What? Connie Kauzi is hanging up her... Her cake lady hat. Okay, so she said that the gym is her priority, so she's gonna have to have to hang up her cake lady hat. Oh man, that's gonna be sad for so many people. She makes such awesome cakes, but her daughter Ashley, cozy Pennington, Brandon's brand new wife. She is becoming the new cake lady. And she is um, Koozie Cakes out of um, Virginia Beach. So y'all can look her up at Koozie Cakes and, um, or go to um, Ashley Pennington's page on Facebook and y'all can find her there and put in orders with her there. She makes awesome cakes. I haven't been getting no, no posts from her lately about um, her cakes. So she may just be that busy right now. And she may have started a new job right now. Hey, Aaron. Aaron was over there wrestling on Sunday with Derek Young. Aaron Mitchell, the young man I was telling you about, going to be on this two-day event with Cage Aggression coming in August. It's going to be the end of August. I want to say it's going to be somewhere around where this next... um. Where this next, around the time of this next bare knuckle fighting championship card. Also, with that being said, um, Jason Knight is out as the main event. He's got an injury that he's got to um, recover from. He said he's been it's been waning him for a while, so um, he don't think it's a good idea to come into this fight with that injury, which I completely understand, young man. Completely, you don't need. So, with that being said, they got to find a new main event. Christine will be, Christine Misfit Fierra will be defending that brand new women's American belt she has. So, be looking for it. That's what I'm saying. Be looking for that. And our guy, our black American heavyweight linear champion at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, Arnold Boombaye Adams, will be finally defending his belt too. So, Maybe not, and I got my interview with him when I was at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, but I'm going to reach out to him again and see if me and him could talk a little bit more about his upcoming opponent. But y'all know AJ's mind frame isn't going to change. Um, it, it's just not going to change. Um, he feels like if you want them belts and you feel like you can take them, come try. So, Miss Nikki is back, y'all. I'm sorry I was gone for so long. I just had, you know, I, I needed some downtime. Because y'all know I've been chasing this bare knuckle fighting championship since one with them. They're going back 
which I consider to be our home at this point, back to um, the Mississippi Coliseum, Coastal Coliseum, that's our home because we've, we haven't had more fights than anywhere. We have not had more fights than we've had there. So I believe that's Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship home right now at this point. And um, they're going back home. We were in, where the hell was we at last time? Can't even remember what the heck was we at. Oh, Florida. <laughs> yes, we was at the Florida Fairgrounds down there, the Tampa um the Tampa Fairgrounds down there. Um that place is huge and it was nice and um Nate Kate look thick in that dress. She looking thick in that dress, girl. You looking thick, Katie. Go girl. Oh, think of that wedding dress. That's what I'm talking about. You go. I'm so I'm so happy for you, Nate. I am so happy for you, young man. Also, um, Titans of the Cage next card is coming up in September. Um, they're going to be back at the brand new Apex Expo Center out there in, um, can't even think of it, but the new Apex Center out there in, um, I want to see, it's not wrong though, it's right next door. And they, the setup is going to be a little bit different. They're going to move some of the seating clothes. They're, they're resituating the cage so that the view is much better for those in the stands so that'll be great um that apex center is off the chain it is nice in there y'all it was very nice it was very clean um as soon as you walk in you be right there in all the action right there in all the action so if you're out there and everybody's hit me up am i gonna be at the next ewc am i gonna be at the next um titans of the cage i cannot answer that for y'all right now i just cannot to all the people, <laughs> somebody, oh, my girlfriend, my best friend, she posted something, and like, Monica say goodbye to me. oh, I can't even read this, my friends are crazy sometimes, <laughs> Darius Flyer says, being a music promoter and combat promoter is literally more stressful than any job I have ever had. <laughs> That's what happens when you want to be the man, Darius. Have us to the best of them, baby. You'll get through it. He'll make it. Oh, yeah. Speaking of him, Mr. Flowers, he was on a card last week. Um, He took a, a, a very short notice fight. Very short notice. I think they asked him to fight Tuesday. He was fighting Friday or Saturday or something. Um, And he got him. That was a, a, a good fight until it ended. Um, he got a couple knockdowns on his opponent, but his, but when he would knock him down, the guy would fall into a takedown. So, um, Darius held him off as long as he could with the takedown defense or whatever was working with that. And, but, um, Mr. Flowers ended, did not get the nod. He ended up losing that fight to, I forget what my son called it, some weird arm submission but um yeah it happens he'll be back bigger and stronger um he just shot his shot for bare knuckle fighting championship so maybe me and him can sit down and do an interview and we can talk about everything that's been happening for his career in the last few months and um or just since the top of 2019 um see if he wants to shoot a shot again for with mr feldman or nate short um for bare knuckle <laughs> and see what happens and i was not under My girl, Michelle Nogue, will be making her next professional boxing um, appearance in September. And will um, Thompson, 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 I believe his Thompson, will be making his pro boxing um, debut in September on the same card as Michelle on the same promotion. And... Hopefully, 
we'll be able to find our guy easy about on that card. So, any takers, hit us just up. Let them know that you might be looking, might might want to get in there and dust it up with old Reggie Easy Barnett Jr. Um, on this boxing card. Um, like I said, be looking for for me and Reggie to be getting together again soon. Um, yeah, he did come out of that that last fight with um with Johnny with his right hand. Um, I believe he broke that. So, um, Mr. Malinaji was not the only one that came out of there with, with some injuries to his hands. Um, Reggie went right back to work Monday. He went back to work Monday. He went back to work on Monday. Jacked up hand and everything. Um, you know, everybody uses different stress relievers, and I think that's a big stress reliever for Reggie is being able to go back to his 9 to 5 job that he has. John. Um, that's a stress reliever for him and um, it gets him through the good times and the bad times so with that being said he took his behind right on back to work um, got back right back into the thick of things with his real life and um, I think he took maybe a week or so off from the gym and then he went back to the gym and um, I don't think he's had as much motion as he'd like you know with his hand being down right now but um we're going to talk to him about that and see what's going on, see how he's doing, and see where his mental is at right now, and see what this upcoming fight with him and Abdel is going to be looking like. And trust and know, Reggie and Abdel, um, their camp loves our camp, and our camp loves their camp. That's that's what I can say about that. Um, Abdel has a very, very, very honorable camp that he runs with, so... I cannot be mad. And they also posted um, Abdel's gym is the only gym in Florida that is now reaching out to fighters to try to come and train with them for bare knuckles. So um, I thought I posted, I thought I, re I thought I shared that when I got that, but I may not have. I'll go back to my page and check that out, see if I can share that for y'all. But um, I'm sorry, you guys, that this taking me so long to get this out the way. But uh, it is what it is. If I didn't speak about your bout or anything like that, it's not that I don't have love for you. It's just that it's not floating around in my mind in this moment right now. Um, So if there's anything that y'all know that I don't know just yet, but I need to know, y'all hit me up. Let me know. Um, It is what it is. It's Miss Nikki, Fight Hits MMA. I did the best to bring y'all up to date with what was going on in combat sports. The stuff that I felt was important. The stuff that I think y'all would be interested in um, talking about. Um, it's a lot of up-and-coming fighters. So, with that being said, I need my amateur fighters to really consider is fighting what you really want to do. Because you spend a lot of time and money and energy, you know training and going to gyms and stuff like that and yeah y'all sacrificed a lot i need y'all to be serious about it whether you're amateur or pro and i say that because it looks like i feel like we're kind of moving into a space where on the professional side and especially at the high the upper echelon we are not getting fights because they make the most sense for those two people to be fighting. We're getting some fights because people need to be made to feel better because they may not have had such a good run. Um, and I'm looking at this as um, we're seeing a lot of these dust-ups happen because of the... And I know everybody wants to eat. I know everybody deserves to eat. But if you are not serious about combat sports, then you don't need to have your ass in there because you can seriously get injured. And the ones that are even serious about it and have a career with it, they are at peril of getting injured too. So I think it just heightens the eligibility of getting injured the less serious you take it. So I, I need y'all to do that. And I'm over paying for pay-per-views. I really am because not even an hour after the fight was over. Any of these fights, these pay-per-view fights. And it don't be 
people sneaking, letting go of the footage that they may have gotten because they was in, in, in the arena for the fight. It is the people, the promotions and the, the people who do the, the media and stuff for these um, fights that are letting it go. So if I wait for an hour, if I watch the post-fight press conference, I can go back and watch the fight as soon as I watch the post-fight press conference. That doesn't make sense to me. That does not make sense to me. But y'all want us to go to 50 different places to buy these fights, but then an hour after the pay-per-view has happened, I can go on YouTube and watch the whole fight. It's a lot of things we gotta clean up. It's a lot of things we gotta do. We gotta get together, y'all. We need to make the, we need to make some changes. So with that being said, congratulations to all my winners. Keep your head up to all my guys and girls who haven't had a win or didn't get a win here lately. Keep your head up. Keep training. Elevate yourself. Stay positive. Miss Nikki, Fight Hands MMA. Love, peace, and hair grease. Talk to you guys soon. Sorry, I had to restart the video. I don't know what happened. I just seem to just dimming down. Let me check my battery. Oh, got good battery, so. The last thing I expect to see is you guys being taken down by submissions. Um, because your ex-combat wrestling traps. So, with that being said, I think you guys have... Y'all had such a growth spurt and y'all became comfortable and y'all stopped elevating. Y'all stopped elevating. Y'all riding on all these accolades that you have already earned, <clears throat> which all fighters do to a certain degree. But I think you guys are letting this just go way to your head too far. And I think y'all need to get back to the basics. I think y'all need to really um, pull it together. Pull it together. Pull it together. Because it just, I don't know. One of the biggest teams in Virginia. Y'all got a lot of accolades going for y'all. But now, y'all got to say, okay, we've earned this. That's all good. We've done this. But how are we going to go to the next level? How are we going to elevate ourselves individually and as a team? That's what I'd like to see happen next for X-Combat Wrestling Tribes. And I don't think it's so much, uh, I, I'm not on... It's y'all as individuals. I'm not even going to put this on, on coach. This is y'all as individuals because he gives y'all a lot of great stuff. A lot of great stuff. So, Coach X does give y'all a lot of great stuff. I need y'all to start utilizing it. Stop worrying about poking your chest out. Stop worrying about who's the toughest talker and who can talk the most trash on Facebook and all social media, all that stuff. I need y'all to get back to the basics. I need y'all to be hungry again. Maybe that's how y'all had such a growth spurt because of that time y'all was hungry. Then y'all got a little bit of y'all got fed a little bit and then y'all wasn't as hungry anymore. I need that hunger back from y'all. I need that. That's what's gonna be that's what's going to get you guys to the next level of your success as individuals, whether you pro or AMI, and as a team. Do that for Miss Nikki. Please. Please. Um, it's been a lot going on. So, Amanda Nunez got Holly Holmes up out of there. Then, Jermaine Durandamy, um got her opponent up out of there. Um, yeah, I was going to make a video then. But I didn't because I needed to see, you know, what the, you know, fallout was going to be from that. And, um, you know, the first thing I thought was, I haven't seen Jermaine Durandamy do much of anything since she, okay, now it's probably going to be tomato, tomato with this one. Because I felt like she gave up that belt when everybody likes to word it as the UFC stripped her of that belt. But if she says as the standing reigning champion 
that she does not want to fight her next opponent, then to me, she gave up that belt. She gave up that belt. So, but now, you know, she's talking like, um, she's talking like she wants to fight Amanda Nunes, who they are reporting she's fought, they fought early in, in Amanda's or somebody's career. I don't know. They fought a while ago and Amanda beat her then. Or did she? Yeah, I think Amanda beat her then. So, with that being said, why would she think it would be smarter to fight her now when she's she's got championship experience now? And if that's the case that she's already lost against her, does that mess with her psyche going into you know, a fight with Amanda? Happy birthday, Gary Grant Jr. That's our um that's our ringmaker for um Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Happy birthday, baby. Um, does does that mentally mess with her? I don't know. This is weird. That whole situation is weird for me. I don't know. Y'all may see something other than what I see. I don't know. But that situation is weird for me. We're gonna watch we're gonna have to watch that play out. Whatever. Yes. And, um, yeah, then Henry Cejudo beat somebody. He won a fight to, um, John Jones beat, um, his last opponent. When are y'all going to learn? Y'all got to check them leg kicks. I don't know what y'all do. I can't, t I don't have an answer for him, like. And it's not that I don't think that young, that last young man, um, Oh, Tiago Santos. That's who it was. Yeah. He he came out of that fight in a really bad way. Um he had he ended up having to have surgery on both his knees and it just it was bad. It just ended up and I believe that's what I'm saying. If y'all don't get used to or make a habit of trying to take away at least one of your opponent's weapons, then that is what it is and John Jones just chooses to take y'all's legs from y'all when he fight cuz he knows that's where that's the most important part of your body is holding you up and if you can't push off on on your foot or your leg or the bottom half, half of your body like you you should be able to then that lessens the powers with your punches that lessens your movement so his train of thought is Hey, let me just take off the easiest thing I can. And he get y'all every time with those oblique kicks and them funny little kicks he put on y'all at the beginning of the fight. And then he just wear y'all down with that. And next thing you know, he don't want to fight again. So, I don't know. Y'all got to figure out a way how to get around those daggone kicks from him. That's about um, all I can say. But I think if Tiago... Had not he may have had a little, uh, some of an injury coming into that fight because y'all do that too y'all go into fights with injuries so if that was already bothering him before and then John just aggravated him more in the fight and made it hard for him to move um, if he had been able to move like he his normal fluid movement I believe that we may be seeing a new 205 um, champion right now but he couldn't move the way he wanted to but he never gave up in that fight that's what makes it so awesome is that like he was like yeah I'm hurt but I'm still dangerous it's like a cat being shot in a leg but they still they can still swipe your face off you see what I'm saying so John was still always in danger even though Tiago was hurt so keep that in mind and I would like to see if it would be possible. I would like to see that one run back. I want to see that one come back more than I want to see John and um. Jeez, I can't think of this man's name. DC. I even at heavyweight, like in this, I don't want to see that. Like that's just my personal opinion. I don't want to see it again. I don't want to see it. I'd rather see. I'd rather wait for Tiago. To, to heal 
nicely from his surgeries, get back on his feet, get back into a train, get back into training, and then go through a nice good training camp and come face John Jones again. I would rather wait and see that than to see John and DC go at it again. And everybody, you see, it's us, the media, that makes the fanship and the fan base believe different things. And everybody's saying that's the biggest fight that could be sold. Yeah, monetarily wise. And maybe not even not because maybe there's more people out there to feel the way I feel about it. Like, I don't want to see that again. I don't want to see them fight again. Not at heavyweight, not at 205. I'm good. There's nothing more. There's nothing left there for me at the end of the day. So, I mean, but as a spectator, if it happened, I will watch. But I don't want, that's not a fight that I'm pushing to see. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and, and you know what? This is, I, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about how I felt after seeing um, Reggie not meet his own expectation of winning the two belts at Bare Knuckle. I had to go back and think. Like, this was not the first time that I have had to deal with this energy. I've had to watch my girl Britton go through it twice. I had to watch her go through it twice. And that girl just, she just keeps coming. She just keeps coming. And I, she doesn't see herself as just somebody that they're throwing out there to the wolves. She really, every time she steps in there, she wants to win. She wants to win. And I think if the fight had not, you know, if Christine hadn't got that eye cut, you know, over Britain, that fight would have went on, and that that may have given Britain the chance to drag Christina into a little bit of muddy water, you know, in the later rounds, and maybe be maybe take over the fight. It didn't it didn't happen that way, and you know, it's all good. But at the end of the day, you guys are some true champions, whether you win belts or not. You guys are true champions because. Y'all come back from from your losses, and you try to be better, and you bring you still bring your same positive energy, and that that's very you know that's admirable, very admirable, you know, because even those of us who don't fight sometimes can't even get through the day without having a breakdown. So yeah, I'm very 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 um, excited to say that. Oh, my little cousin is finally walking. <laughs> I think she walks like her mom. But, um... <sighs> There's so much going on. I need y'all to reel it in. I need y'all to reel it in. Um... You get out what you put in. That's, that's the most that I can say is that you get out what you put in. Um, there's been a lot of things that's been happening. And some things I just let it... Psh, oh, the Cowboy Fight Series. I'm glad I wrote stuff down. So on that card, I did go to their page and I did see the... Um, but I didn't record it. The wins and losses on that card. But the one... There's two fights I want to mention. Oscar Jimenez and Corey Champion. Corey got the 135 belt at Cowboy Fight Series. I'm very proud of you, Corey Champion. Congratulations, young man. Um, your first uh, show up there, tough, tough fight. Did not get, did not get the look. Didn't get the nod, but you, you went back to the basics, you went back to the gym, you said, we gonna get this the next time by you came in there, baby, you got that. So congratulations for you, uh, Corey. So he now has that 135 belt at Cowboy Fight Series. That's gotta be an awesome feeling for, for any of you guys that's, you know, um, that is fighting on that card. It's a new promotion, it's Cowboy, Sarone's promotion. And for you guys to get wins and get belts on that promotion is an awesome big thing. And like, as I said to you guys before, if Mr. Cerrone is offering these gentlemen and these ladies a chance at um, earning, when they earn wins and belts and stuff, 
to have money put into an escrow account for their future pro career. He's offering them a chance to come down to his ranch. He's offering them a chance to be put in contact with some great coaches and um, some great people to build a team around themselves going into their pro career and um, offering them a chance at a showing on one of the multiple levels of UFC um, media that they have. So that's that's awesome. So that's got to be a great feeling. Congratulations. Mr. Jimenez, he was our guy that beat um, Zion Thomason on the first card. Well, he returned on the second card, and he did not get the nod this time. Um, so congratulations to his opponent. That's what I'm saying. I didn't record the wins and losses and the names of the competitors. There was a lot going down on that card, too. Um, I'm just very, very um, proud of, of you, Corey. And, um, J.O. Nationals happened that next week after the last bare knuckle. And our girl from uh, 757 Boxing, Anaya Hart, went to Wisconsin and she got herself a bronze medal. So out of all the, all the fighters that showed up to this J.O. Nationals out there in Wisconsin a few weeks ago, this young lady was able to fight herself to a bronze medal. So congratulations to my young lady, Anaya. Very proud of you, young lady. You traveled a great distance and you came back as the warrior that you left out as. Um, I got to see her um, the day before they, uh, the day before we left to go to Bare Knuckle and um, she was so relaxed and so, you know, she was good. So I'm glad that she was able to take that energy and go up there and um, fight herself to a bronze medal. And that, that was no easy feat. You know what I'm saying? That's not no easy feat. There's hundreds of kids in these daggone J.O. Uh, tournaments. And um, sometimes the, the, the brackets can be big. The, the individual weight classes can have a lot of people competing in one weight class. So with that being said, um, congratulations, and I am very proud of you. And then my 757 Boxing went down to Christy Martin this past weekend, and they did their damn thing. Congratulations, team. Woo -hoo. <laughs> So very proud of you. So very proud of you. And if you have not caught my interview with Mr. Aaron, the Messiah, Mitchell. I say the Messiah. It might just be Messiah. <laughs> so... Aaron Messiah Mitchell, um, pro MMA fighter. This young man was on the Beast Mode card that was happening the same day as this last bare knuckle. I heard some awesome stuff went down on that Pro-Am card. I am very proud of you guys. Yes. I heard about an awesome um, grappling that went on in, in one of the matches. And the kid, they just knew he was doomed. The dude had the... Had the um, I can't even think of it. But he had him in the arm lock and he got his way out of it. They thought he was they, he was flattened out in every arm bar. The guy had him flattened out in everything. And this kid just used his patience to get but I want to I want to talk to this kid. I, I need to find out who this was so we could do an interview so I can get his mind frame on where he was at when that was happening and what was he thinking? How did he get out of it? How did it feel to come back and get that win? It was it was it was amazing. But Aaron himself was the main event. Aaron, Messiah Mitchell, him and, um, what is this guy's name? I want to say J. D. I forget what the young man. J. Ellis. Mr. Ellis, um, who came in as the veteran with the more, with the, with more experience. And, um, they both come with a little bit of wrestling history background. Well, I believe both of them have great history in wrestling. Um, Aaron brought his kickboxing, his MMA. He brought everything that he does into that octagon with him. And he walked away with the win. And I was very concerned about this young man. We did do an interview before this car. I just felt like something was missing. I just, and I never released it. And I apologize to Aaron, but he understood um, I just felt like something was missing from it. I don't know what was missing from it. But, um, yes, we sat down and did our post-fight interview a couple days ago. And um, we talked about this caged aggression um, card coming up. It's a two-day event that he's going to be fighting on. Um, he said, media day is Wednesday. 
weigh-ins is Thursday. He fights on the Friday portion of, of the two-day event. So it's Friday and Saturday. He's going to fight on the, the Friday portion. He may be the co-main event. His fight may be the co-main event. Um, you'll have to watch the interview to get all the information from, from he and I about this upcoming two-day event. So hopefully that interview will bring forth more fighters that's going to be on that card and we can dust it up and do some interviews and see see what kind of build up who's going to be what's what's the challenge what's good and this is one of the biggest um pro am promotions in iowa the caged aggression so um maybe miss nikki will be trying to get herself together to go down there and um check it out because it's going to be a couple hours away from here it's still in iowa but it's a couple hours away from here and um we're just going to have to see what happens. Easy peasy. No worries. But trust and know, I got something very special coming up for you guys. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to release it tomorrow. Um, hopefully, everything will work itself out and mold together. And um, I can make that happen. It'll be a very special um, interview. One that I didn't even know was coming. But you know, God is good. So, with that being said, if I didn't talk about it... No disrespect, you guys. Um, it just didn't pop up in my mind right now. There's been so much stuff going on between now and then. Uh, oh, yeah. We lost one of our greats. Pernell Sweet Pete Whitaker. Oh, babe, it's gone. That was the interview that got away from me. Oh, I feel so terrible for his family. And I know exactly what they're going through because it happened to me. My mom was hit. Her and her friend was crossing the street pedestrian versus vehicle so with that being said one of our greats is gone my question is now um how do we uphold the legacy that he built everything that he left us um which one of my virginia fighters boxers which one of my virginia boxers because this is strictly boxing which one of y'all is going to step up to the plate I'm not asking y'all to fill his shoes, but which one of y'all is going to be the hometown pride now? As many of y'all working down there, as many of y'all in many gyms down there, I need to know which one of y'all is going to be the next hometown hero. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie has been doing such a great job at it, at Bare Knuckle, um, but that's Bare Knuckle. I need to know which one of my boxers from Virginia is going to be our next hometown um, face for Virginia and boxing. Um, you guys have said to me many times that um, we haven't had a pay-per-view, we haven't had this, we haven't had that since Sweet Pea did it. So with that being said, yes, you guys, and I was not there. I was not home. I didn't get to travel with my team down to the Christy Martin show this weekend. I didn't get to go to the memorial service for Sweet Pea Whitaker. I'm imagining a lot of stuff didn't come through my news feed either about how that turnout was but they held it at the Norfolk um, scope that was the last place I believe he um, fought in front of the hometown and um, I gotta get some feedback from that I gotta get some feedback some feedback from that and like I said my home gym was away at the Christy Martin show so they weren't there to attend the service so um, he has a lot of memories with a lot of different people just over his history, his career of his his boxing um, legacy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of people that have some great stories to tell interacting with Mr. Whitaker. Um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of boxers have some stories to tell about being in the ring with that young man. <laughs> Yes, um, and it was such an honor to meet him when I did meet him, and I felt like, you know, I should post our little video. I, I put it out when I when I first did it, but you know, stuff just falls by the wayside sometimes. People don't see it as being as important, but that moment was a very honorable moment for Miss Nikki and Fight Heads MMA. Um, it was actually um, Cornelius K. Nine Bundridge who pointed him out to me at that um, Sugar Burt tournament. I seen him, but I was behind him, so I didn't know that was him. And I started talking to K-9, and he made me laugh. And then after we did our little um, dust-up, 
with the video. Um, he was like, Miss Nikki, to go, um, sweet pea right there. Won't you go over there and talk to him? I was like, oh, for real? He was like, yeah, go check him out. Go talk to him. He's cool. He's cool. So thank you, Cornelius K9 Bundridge, um, for sending Miss Nikki over there to talk to sweet pea Whitaker. Um, I just want to send love, prayers, and and just say to his family, keep your head up. Um, no one can ever dispute or take away the legacy that he built. And it's people that are chasing his legacy, that want to be him, that want to do the things that he's done inside the ring. So with that being said, he left an awesome legacy. He's lost, left an awesome family and friends, all the people that love him, even the commentators, all the promotions he's ever fought on. You know, it just is what it is. And we got to pick ourselves up and move on from this just as we do any other major tragedy in our lives. But we just got to know that he was a great man and any moment that any of us got to spend with him was a great one. So, um, Love and prayers go out to the Whitaker family and all those who love and support Mr. Whitaker, including myself. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. But be looking for me to hopefully drop this interview that I did not even know was going to fall into my lap. That's what I'm saying, y'all. Even though I'm far away from home. The greatness of combat sports still is everywhere, you guys. You guys are everywhere. That's why I need y'all to uphold yourselves and, and be proud of who you are and what you're doing and, um, and support each other and support each other. Support each other. You know, this, the, the jab talk stops when you guys walk into the ring or walk into the octagon and you know, it's mano a mano or woman a woman. Y'all do what y'all do, and I cannot ask y'all to do anymore. Oh, this is what I've been to tell y'all. That young man, Joel Cottle, I believe his name was, um, the young man that got knocked out of the ring this past weekend. I think it was Friday. Um... His camp had reached out to me to do an interview with him the week, last week, early, or maybe the end of the week before, right before he was about to fight. And my schedule just would not, it, it, I, I couldn't make it happen. Um, and I'm sorry for that. But, you know, I just want to say that that could be, that could be any one of you guys or girls. Like, I don't have no judgment. And I seen it come through my feed, but I didn't connect that it was him that I was supposed to interview until after I reached back out to the team after I knew the fight happened. And I said, how did our guy do? You know, because I thought it would be great if he got the win, then we could um, <laughs> do a nice interview post-fight. Um, and that just was not to be. That was just terrible. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it could be any one of y'all that that could happen to. So, I don't have no judgment for this young man. I didn't even watch. I see, It came through my feed. I seen it. And it kept saying, boxer gets knocked out of ring. And it just wasn't, you know, it just didn't saturate with me. Until after I reached back out to the team and said, you know, what was the end result of his fight? And they let me know that that was him all over ESPN and um, that could be anybody that could be anybody so I don't have no judgment and I didn't watch it because like I felt like that has happened before that wasn't you know when I read the the headline it wasn't something to me that had not happened before <laughs> yeah mm, that kid went out on his sword, I tell you that much. My question is, yes, he is, this is not the question, but yes, he did get up and get back into the ring before the end of the count because they was counting, you know, they were hitting the block, counting, 
And so if he had not made it back in the ring, then they would, you know, the fight would have been over. But he got back in the ring and he showed that he was still capable of possibly fighting. And he got hit a couple more times and the ref was like, I just can't let this go on. So that kid hit him. He was punched drunk and that's what sent him out of that ring face first is being punched drunk. That is literal. That does happen to our fighters, our boxers, kickboxers, anybody in combat sports. You can get hit and be punched drunk. The next day after fight, sometimes two, three days, couple.